today at the Olympic Fieldhouse. Boris Mikhailov, the greatest goal scorer in Soviet history, number 13, dazzles here with his play, gets the puck to Sergei Starikov. Petrov also gets an assist, and the Soviets are en route right now. That set the pattern of the game. Starikov scoring first. Then Mikhailov made it 3-0 for the USSR, and the barrage continued. Goal number four, the Soviets' goal here came at 12-19 of the opening period from the stick of defenseman Vladimir Fedosov, right there on the rebound. Petrov and Harlamov assisting on the goal. But Vladimir Petrov right there along with Fedosov, and he sends it home. A gallant effort by the Japanese goaltender, Iwamoto. He gave it a gallant effort in goal with Japan, but his non-existent defense certainly didn't help him out. Alexander Golikov made it 5-0 on a two-on-one passing play from Makarov at 14.59. Then at 17.30, Baldera scored to make it 6-0. The Soviet seventh goal from Vladimir Golikov, the younger brother of Alexander, and then Vladimir Golikov scored again at 19.26 of the first period, and it was 8-0 for the Soviets. No stopping the Soviets in this game against Japan. Six seconds into the second period, Petrov scored, and it just continued and continued. 9-0 at that point. Kazadinov scored to make it 10-0. Vladimir Golikov got another goal. And then Boris Mikhailov made it 12-0. And one had to have a little sympathy for the Japanese national team. Fedosov rounded out the scoring, and they have just scored again, and it's 14 to nothing for the Soviets over Japan. We'll have more coverage as this is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. The Soviet Union team is the heavy favorite to win the gold medal here at this Olympics, as they have in six of their last seven tournaments. To be fair, the Japanese are still learning. At the moment, they're ranked right at the bottom of the list in the two divisions here. Now to the rink, and the commentators Ron Roosh and Tom Watt. Thanks very much, Lloyd. And the story here, of course, was just the Soviet Union completely running away from Japan. You have to pity Japan a little bit. They have just been totally dominated and bombarded. They ought to also pity the poor goaltending. Uh, Takeshi Iwamoto started the game, and now the second goaltender, Minoru Misawa, is in. Uh, the scoring of this game is it's now 15 to nothing, 7.35 remaining in the contest. Alexander Golikov has two goals and an assist. Vladimir Golikov has two goals and an assist. Valery Harlamov, a goal and four assists. Boris Mihailov has four assists in the game. Vladimir Petrov has two goals and two assists. Helmut Baldera has one goal and two assists. And the shots on goal right now, Soviet 62, Japan 19. Tom, uh, the, uh, you really can't judge what uh, how good the Soviets are or will be the rest of the tournament, but uh, against a team like this, but certainly they have, they're, well, they're, all they're doing now is just having fun out there. Really? <laughs> Well, they, they, well, everybody in the world knows they have a great team. They're the world's champions, and certainly Japan coming from the B group are in a, a great deal of difficulty in playing a hockey game like this. Uh, when we get a moment, there's some interesting changes, however, in the lineup for the Soviets. All right, well, let's pick up the play now. That's Fedosov, number two, blasting one right at the Japanese goal. The Japanese coming away with the puck, but they get it only out to center ice right before Kasatinov takes over, feeds Balderas, who just deflects it into the Japanese zone. We've got 6.45 left in this hockey game. At center ice now, the Japanese coming over the line and carrying the puck there is Hoshino. He got the shot away, but it was well wide of the net. And at center ice once again. Down over the line, Balderas cutting out in front of the net, but it rolled off the end of the stick, and the puck is flipped out to center ice once again. Kasatinov turning with it, working on a defensive pair here with Fedosov. Here's Balderas in over the line. He shot that one wide, and the puck bounces out all the way over to the other side. On me. On the out of center ice. There's a behind the net. Fedosov touching it back there, and it's called on the icing. The faceoff will come back in the Japanese zone with 6.13 left, 15 nothing. The Soviet Union is leading. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. 
away here off the faceoff. Alexander Golikov inside the Japanese zone, rolls it out in front. There's a high shot taken at the side of the net by Makarov. It goes into the corner. Japanese player falls, and picking up the loose puck is Vladimir Golikov. Rolls it in front, and a chance there for Makarov, but it rolled wide and over to the far boards. Japanese coming out at center ice, but again, the Soviets take over. Vasiliev in his own zone, leads it out to center ice. Makarov, he ducks a check. And trailing on the play and carrying the puck over the line is Vladimir Golikov. Out in front, there's the shot. It's right on the rebound, and it flips high in the air and is batted out of the air and into the net for the 16th goal for the Soviet Union. And scoring that goal, Alexander Golikov, who now has a four-point night going for himself as well, and that completes his hat trick. Well, there's nothing to this game, is there? Because <laughs> after the original shot, the puck does come up in the air, and Golikov really bats the puck out of the air. There's the puck out, up, bouncing right out of midair into the net for his goal. So Golikov will get the goal, 16 to nothing now with 5-10 remaining in the game. Makarov will get it a point as well. 